You've caught me in Slovenia, one of Europe's most beautiful hidden gems and a country you definitely need to put on your list. You'll find it just below Austria on the map. I'm about to start my journey home to Australia. The first two legs, from Ljubljana to Singapore, will be on Turkish Airlines in their award-winning business class. This is my first time flying Turkish Airlines long haul and I'm really looking forward to it. Join me and we'll do it together. This is the biggest advantage I see of Turkish Airlines and why I'm so keen for them to start flying into Australia. That is their route network and they, the fact they fly into so many places in Europe, especially Eastern Europe. Places like Slovenia here, well worth a visit, but not a lot of airlines fly here. Turkish does. So uh, let's go and check in, start my journey to Singapore and uh, see what that Turkish Airlines hospitality is like. There is only one generic business class lounge at Ljubljana Airport. It's a nice lounge with a cool outdoor terrace. Be warned though, this machine serves the worst coffee I've ever tasted. Turkish Airlines, unlike most other European airlines, offers proper business class seats on its narrow bodied European flights. These seats are similar to Australian domestic business class or American domestic first class seats. The flight from Istanbul was less than two hours, but a full meal was served with a choice of mains. I went with a lamb kebab with roasted eggplant, which was delicious. So far, Turkish Airlines was really delivering. After dinner, I had a quick 45 minute nap and woke up as we landed. That's the first flight done. The Istanbul airport is massive. It's beautiful, it's new, but it is massive. Over 65 million passengers a year. So expect to walk and walk here. Uh, I've got about an hour and 40 minutes before my flight. So let's just quickly check to see where the gate is and if I've got time to visit the lounge. So I'm at A3 and I've got to go to F19. Let's see how long that takes. Good evening, Captain. This is the Miles and More Lounge. It is massive. It's up here and it stretches all the way over there. But I've got about 15, 20 minutes walk, so I'm going to try for the business class lounge instead. Looking at the airport layout, the business class lounge looks like a mirror image of the Miles and More lounge. It's massive with lots of different areas and even private rooms available. I've only got time for one thing in the lounge, it's obviously going to be baklava. The moment of truth, the taste test. Mm, delicious. I don't want to start an argument, but um, let me know in the comments which country you think has the best baklava. That'll get the comments going. I've just discovered the Champions League room here in the lounge. This lounge is fantastic. I'd love to spend a few hours here, but no time to waste. I've got a flight to catch. It's time to go to Singapore. Let's go. Oh, what have we got? Uh, 
lemon mint, please. Yes, thank you. We made it. Welcome aboard. Next stop, Singapore. Here's to one sensational flight. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board this Turkish Airlines flight. Got these really cool views of the moon just after we took off. Now that we're up in the air, let's have a good look at this Turkish Airlines business class cabin and seat. The cabin is laid out in a one 2 one configuration, giving each passenger direct dial access. The seats are staggered, making these perfect for couples that want to be close. The seats themselves are very good. They are the same design as Singapore Airlines mid-haul or regional business class. That's the seats Singapore Airlines use on their Adelaide, Brisbane and Perth routes. I've always really liked these seats because they are comfortable and designed with practicality in mind. That said, I'm just over 180 centimetres or a touch under six foot tall with an average size dad bod. Bigger, taller passengers might find these seats a little bit tight. The advantage of the bulkhead seats is it does have more leg room. This is especially important in bed mode, which I'll show you a little later in the video. By contrast, the economy class cabin on the Turkish Airlines 787 is laid out in a 333 configuration. One of the big selling features of Turkish Airlines long haul flights is they have a chef on board. He came around and took our orders before departure. The chef on board is one of the reasons why Turkish is known amongst frequent travellers for the quality of their food. As you can imagine, I had high expectations and was really looking forward to this meal. Dining on demand was offered, however as this flight departed at 2am, the crew went straight into meal service to maximise passenger sleep time. To further save time, the post departure bar service, including warm roasted nuts, was incorporated into meal service. It was a Glenfiddich single malt for me. For dinner, I started with the smoked salmon, which was really, really good. I was impressed with the whole meal presentation and the attention to detail. For mains, I went with the beef because I know this is a hard dish to get right in the air. The meat itself was very good, but as the only accompaniment was a green leaf salad, it seemed a bit plain for a business class meal to me. For dessert, I couldn't go past a strawberry tart and it didn't disappoint. Overall, this was a very good meal. For those still hungry, there was also a snack menu available. After dinner, most of the cabin went straight to sleep but I wasn't ready to sleep just yet, so instead checked out the entertainment system and watched a movie. The Turkish entertainment system is excellent with lots of viewing and listening choices, including various live TV channels. High quality Denon headphones are provided. This aircraft is also Wi-Fi enabled with business class passengers getting a very generous one gigabyte of free internet access. It worked well and the evening rush flying east from Europe was definitely in full swing. Before we get ready for bed, here's a quick look at the Turkish Airlines amenities kit. It's well stocked with all the usual suspects. Business class passengers are also provided with slippers, handy for when you want to visit the bathroom during the night. Let's do a quick bathroom tour on this uh, Turkish Airlines 787, uh, right at the front of the aircraft. It's a uh, beautiful looking bathroom, spotlessly clean, especially these mirrors. If you compare that to uh, the absolutely filthy mirror, that was on that United Airlines review I did recently. This is a beautiful, and look at this as a nice special bonus. Some little lotions, potions, and smelly stuff. By now, it was definitely time to sleep. Earlier in the flight, the crew had handed out thin mattresses for the seats and large quilted blankets. This made for a comfortable bed. The footroom in this bulkhead seat was very good. I did try one of the other seats and they were much tighter at the feet. The walls in these seats wrap around you, giving you both privacy and enhanced noise protection, as they are made from special noise absorbing materials. Here's a view from the pillow. We were flying east and by now the sun had already risen outside. Unfortunately the electronic windows of the 787 never fully block out the sun and it was shining right in my face. 
the angle of the sun was coming in under my eye mask, so I improvised best I could using my GoPro mount. It did the trick and I slept for four hours, waking up two and a half hours before our arrival in Singapore. At this stage the cabin was just waking up and it was time for breakfast. I started with the Turkish continental option, which was accompanied by fresh fruit and a strawberry yogurt bowl. For mains I went with the blueberry pancakes, another dish the airlines struggle with because by the time they are served they are often very dry. At first glance this one didn't give me high hopes. However, it ultimately comes down to the taste and based on my empty plate, this one was a winner. I finished off with an espresso and spent the rest of the flight typing up my notes and looking at the soothing clouds outside as we flew into Singapore. Overall, I thought this flight was excellent. The crew was really nice, friendly, engaging, and excited that Australia will soon be added to the Turkish Airlines route network. My overall verdict? Turkish Airlines is exactly what it's designed to be, an advert for the wonderful warm hospitality and good food of Turkey. I'd definitely fly them again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. That was a really, really cool flight. Uh, my first ever Turkish Airlines long haul experience. Uh, definitely would fly again. Hey look, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. If you've flown Turkish, let me know uh, what, your, uh, what your experience was. And remember, do also let me know which country has the best back liver. Then check out my channel where there's a whole lot of other videos, more reviews and other stuff happening. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. In the meantime, as always, happy travels.